here at PPL Park. I'm Mike Video. I'm here with Kevin Kincaid talking about the Union's first win of the season, 2-1 victory over New York City FC, stoppage time winner from Vincent Nogueira. How big is that? Uh, it's pretty, pretty big, especially considering how the, well, uh, last week's game ended. But it was uh, talking with Peter Andrews and some of the other guys around. It, it, you, you could feel the weight, the collective weight coming off the shoulders. It was palpable. of Everybody in the stands, from the fans to the players to a couple of uh, union executives were walking back and forth up there, and you could tell that, Jesus, that was a result that they needed. It was just you could yeah. see the weight come off their shoulders. The feeling in the stadium was – you know, anything less than that is not, not going to work for tonight. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Vincent a little bit. Uh, he gets the stoppage time winner, which is obviously huge. But we were talking in the box a little bit beforehand. Man of the match for me even before the goal. Yeah, you know, and he covered a lot of ground. Um, you know, again, tries to keep the ball on the ground, move it back and forth, um, playing in a, in a spot with, with two guys around him who he's not used to playing next to. Um, you know, Zach Pfeffer is not a starter. And uh, Mike LaHood, you know, to begin the season was not a starter. Um, you know, and Jim Curtin talked as far back, this is going back to November, December, I think probably at, in the exit interviews of last season, he said, for us to be successful this year, we need more goals and assists from from Vincent Nogueira and from Christian Maidana as well, too. So when he's playing in that number eight role, you know, he would talk about him drifting around and playing deep. He wants to play a lot deeper normally. Even when they play him at the number 10, you know, he's not a guy who really gets forward or has goal scoring or offensive capabilities. Um, but for him to, to score his first goal of the season, do something that Jim Curtin said they needed going back to last year, and to do it in stoppage time, I mean, that's as big as it gets. That's the difference between one point and three points. Yep. We'll stick with Union midfielders. Uh, we've had a couple of questions on the Ask PSP hashtag and keep them coming. Uh, Eric Ayuk. Uh, so the goal gets taken away from him. Uh, Zach Pfeffer gets <laughs> Great the goal celebration. The that was a hell of a celebration. I think it was wasted, though. I don't yeah, know. I mean, oh. best celebration in Union history? It could, yeah, very well could possibly be. And also Sebastian Latou with the little uh, for, forward roll. Or, um, <laughs> uh, we didn't really get to ask him about that because unfortunately he gashed his arm over here on the side. But, um, but no, I mean, when you when you put you know young kids, we got, everybody has to remind ourselves that this kid's 18 years old. Um, he's not from the United States. Uh, barely speaks a little bit of English. But when you put guys in those kinds of situations, they do what they what they know and what they do is run at people and take people on and they yep. they try crap, you know. Yep. So um, in that sense, that naivete, that sort of inexperience, actually kind of works in your favor because they don't know anything else. And and you know, they say, here we're going to put you out on the right flank, you know. Get the ball and do what you want to do with it, and and you know, give him credit. He was in the right place at the right time. Yeah, Zach Pfeffer is going to get the goal for it, but but Ayak was the one who put it on right. goal, and he was the one who made that run. Yeah, yeah. Um, Latou with the assist on the goal. He starts up top tonight with mm -hmm. uh, Aristegueta being uh, out injured at the last second. How did you think Latou was tonight up top? Yeah, I thought he was all right. I thought he was all right. You know, and and we've we've seen Sebastian play that role plenty of times when he's been here. Even it's the first game that he came back here. 2013, the, the home opener, they surprised us and they played a 4 2 3 1 or 4 5 1 with, with him playing up top. And even in 2011, when he finally broke his scoring slump and when he was banging in goals and, and serving up assists, you know, that's what he was playing. He was playing that single high striker. That's a position that he's played here and he's familiar with. Um, it wasn't his best game, obviously, but he worked his butt off and, and the assist, you know, made all the difference, you know. There was some, I mean, probably because I, I think if it sounds like I'm, I'm a little. If it sounds like I'm critical at all. It's just because probably they weren't serving him up as well as they could have. You know, yeah. he was making a lot of runs and, and well, working Jimmy hard. Jimmy even mentioned that in his press conference that they missed him on a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But that, that assist, he beats Jason Hernandez on the challenge, and he takes it to the touchline. He has the wherewithal to sort of hold it there. And that was the difference between a, a goal or not a goal. Yeah. So. Well, let's talk about the big story this week. The big story has been the goalkeeping position. Uh, so, <laughs> Raisa Mboli, uh not here tonight, not in the country tonight. John McCarthy gets the start. Uh, first, talk, talk about McCarthy's performance. Yeah, um, it was okay. I mean, no, no, really. I mean, he made the saves that he needed to make. Probably the best save I think that he had was the David Villa free the kick that was sort of swerving and coming down at him, and he he got himself in front of it and he, he sort of fisted it out, got it out of the yeah. box. Um, yeah, you know, beyond that, I mean, all the other stuff. You talk about shot stopping. Shot stopping and, and positioning is obviously the most important thing. There's a ball that came over his head. I don't know if he lost it in the sun, sun or if he was yeah. just reaching up. And I don't know if I have to watch the replay. It looked like he palmed it off the crossbar even. But, you know, you wonder if, if Rice and Bully would have made that play. And, and the, the, I think the criticism of McCarthy was that, you know, he was shanking some clearances and he was hitting some balls left and right. But that's at least your concerns yeah. when you're talking about what Some of that went. comes down to nerves in your, your first game, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and Jim Curtin even said, you know, there were – you know, knocking some balls back. They were bouncing. They right. came up to him, whatever. So, you know, he wanted to see him just roll a few back and kind of keep him calm. But he played fine. 
Um, well, let's let's talk about Rice a little bit. So Rice yeah. is is gone for the time being. Uh, I, everyone is up in the air whether we're going <laughs> to see him in again. It just well, I, I don't know. We talked a bit at the beginning about like the weight coming off the shoulders and the atmosphere in the stadium. And you can see how much different it was as soon as John McCarthy's name was announced. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I mean, it, it's something that they had to do. I mean, because what, what would have happened if they rolled out Rice and Bully this week? I mean, the, the atmosphere wouldn't have been. I think that the benching of him actually probably contributed to the park being as full as it was. And I'm not even I, making that up. I'm, no, I'm, I'm completely serious about that. Um, and that change probably sparked a little bit of everybody. After the goal, the first goal that they scored, uh, Zach's goal, um, I looked. I made a point to look back there to look back at the defense of the goalkeeper and John and Stephen Vittoria ran over to John McCarthy and they were talking about some things. Maybe we can do this better or whatever that whatever you know. And uh, then they sort of high fived or shook hands or whatever afterwards. And that's just small, stupid body language kind of stuff that didn't. Um, but <laughs> there he <Exactly>. is. <laughs> that's like small, small uh, body body language stuff that you, that you didn't see from Rice and Bull, you know. Uh, you mentioned just now the atmosphere in the park. I thought this is. I mean, obviously the best atmosphere of the season. We've only had three home games, two of them pretty poor weather. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a good good group of New York City fans traveled down. That always yeah, credit to it. Uh, it was good. Yeah. Probably a couple hundred, three hundred maybe. Yeah. That wakes the sons of Ben up a and little bit. And credit to the, even even the NYC guys who sort of walked right off the field. They st- stopped and paused and, yeah. and applauded the fans. Yeah. But um, no, I mean it. It. it you know, we've, we've talked about it. I mean, it, with with the way that the sports scene is in this city right now, all it takes is one is one win here for, for fans to get excited about it. You you walk down, you know, the, the stairs coming down from the press box, and there's people who are still hanging out, and there's people who are chatting, and they're they're seeing the players circle the field and, and applaud the fans and whatnot. And that's the kind of stuff that it sounds like it's boring and, 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 not, and pointless, but those are the big kind of things that actually make a difference. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that you – I can see it coming. <laughs> I can see it coming from a mile away. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that that uh, you know you see, and you I mean, see this, CJ Sapon trying to clown right people. Here. Yeah, no, it is CJ Sapon trying to turn the music up in the locker room when yeah. John McCarthy is talking to about forty reporters. You know, that's that's all it takes. All it takes is is one goal and stoppage time to change it all. Yeah. So last question: What do the union have to do going forward to keep the momentum? Um. <laughs> well, they have to. You know, I, I'm looking at the. The passing numbers here. Okay, so the possession was NYC like 63 to 36 or 64 to whatever, and the passing accuracy still wasn't good. I mean, they're they're giving up so many so these large chunks of possession, and uh, you know it, it gets hairy for long stretches of time. You know, and that's how they won games last year. It's true they they were a counterattacking team, and this is how they beat teams. But I don't, you know, you just wonder if that's going to be sustainable over the long haul. And and look, NYC put together a really good like 20, 30 minutes in the second half, but I didn't think they were very good today. So Philly just has to keep doing what they're doing. And and it started with John McCarthy and Stephen Vittori. Stephen Vittori, who I thought had a really good game, quietly yeah, had a really good game, and Marisa do as well. So if they can just lock it down and make themselves difficult to play against, then they'll they'll keep themselves in games whether they're scoring goals or not. All right, we'll end it there. Uh, I think we're shooting to do the live show from the 700 again on Thursday. Uh, keep your questions coming to Ask PSP, and we'll try to keep answering them. Uh, I think we'll get Eli back on Thursday. Uh, thanks for watching.